Hey guys, what's up? So we're going to be learning Python, and this is for absolute beginners. My name is Chris Hawks. I've done Python tutorials now for several years. Um, many of them, eh, they're okay, I guess. But this one, I, I want to make sure that I make this as easy as possible for beginners that are starting out. Just a quick background. I actually, uh, I'm self-taught developer, so I never went to school for this stuff. I actually learned everything the hard way. I'm not the smartest guy in the room. I never will be. And if I can learn something like this, I really feel like anybody can. Python's not going to be easy. No programming language is going to be easy when you're first starting out. So whatever first language you choose, it's going to be difficult. But as long as you stick to it and you have determination, you're going to be able to persevere. Um, now, you're going to ask yourself, do I want to learn Python? Do I want to learn Ruby or many of the other many languages out there? Just stick with Python. Python is my recommendation as a first language. I'm a senior C Sharp programmer, but I also do a ton of JavaScript and I write a lot of Python still. Um, I, I have always said that Python is the best first language. I have videos on the matter of why you should learn Python programming. Um, so there, a long story short, Python can be both procedural and object oriented, and none of those terms mean anything to you as a new programmer, but don't worry about it. The, the point is Python is used in stuff like YouTube, um, it's used for websites like Instagram, and it's even used for some gaming. Uh, but a lot of the times it's considered like a systems programming language. And once again, that's another term that you don't really need to be familiar with. But what it is, is it's just writing little scripts in Python. And we'll talk about what a script is in a moment uh, that runs on your computer or a server or wherever. And it just does something. So it might go into a directory of files and start looking through each one of those files, looking for every occurrence of the word Chris and if it occurs in there it might delete the file so basically if you were trying to hide from the IRS and you're trying to look for financial documents that you want to get rid of or if you're Hillary Clinton and you're trying to delete your email server whatever it may be Python would be great a great tool for something like that so that said in order for Python to be able to work you need to have a computer you're gonna need an internet access and you're gonna to need to write your code into something so First things first, we need to actually download Python. We want to download the latest version, so Python 3.5.2. And then uh, just immediately open it once we download it. I'm on a Windows machine, but it shouldn't matter too much what machine you're using. Um, Python is one of the great things about Python as well is that it does work on Mac, Linux, and Windows. Now you can see that it says that I already have Python installed, so you're not going to you're probably not going to get this message if you don't have Python installed already. Uh, but I do, but either way, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade. So we'll see the, the setup process go through here. All right, so after that was done, that took a long time, and we can now close it. So one of the things that this really trips up people that are just getting started with programming in general, because it's something weird that you have to do. One second, I'm going to pause my scan because I know it's going to slow things down. Um, one of the weird things you have to do is you have to actually add Python to your command line. Now some of the Python versions they don't automatically do it and what do I mean by that? Let's go ahead and open up a command prompt. So if you go into Cortana here like I'm on Windows 10, if I type CMD I can open up the command terminal. This is the old school MS-DOS so if you go back to like the days when I was in like third grade installing Leisure Suit Larry on my laptop, my black and white laptop then I would use DOS and everything. Windows wasn't even a thing back then. I'm not even that old, by the way. I'm only 34, but uh, that was that was the day for sure. Um, so if I type in Python, just simply Python and press Enter, I should have this interactive prompt thing pull up. And in here, I can actually type Python. You can see that it's not an actual character. But um, if that does not happen, what that what that means is that you need to add Python to your path. So how do you do that? Uh, you need to go to the command or the control panel. All right, so inside the control panel, you're going to click on system and security, then click on system. Wish I could make this bigger. And on the left hand side, you're going to see advanced system settings, so you're going to click on that. And then you're going to go down to this box that says environment variables and click on that. Now you need to look at your path, and it's going to be under system variables right here. And if you click on the path and you say edit, you need to have a listing here for Python. So somewhere in here is going to be uh, the directory where Python is installed. Now it could be in one other spot besides this too, but I believe it is 
I thought it would be here. If not, if it's not here, then it's actually going to be in your path and your um, your user variable. So if I edit that, and you can see that's where Python is. So this is where it's pointing to the directory where Python got installed by default, which is in my app data, local programs, Python, Python 35. So what happens is um, when something's added to your, your path, Windows knows how to actually open Python because it looks through all your path settings for any sort of matching executable file. And executable is just a, a program. So long story short, you need to add Python to your path if it's not working. Um, if, it, if, you, if it is working, then you're just going to be able to type Python into the command prompt and everything is good. So let's go ahead and do that one more time. So we should just be able to say Python. And then I'll make this a little bit bigger. All right, so inside here, one of the cool features of Python is that it actually comes with this thing which they call the command line. Uh, interpreter or they call it like the dynamic interpreter you can call it whatever the hell you want but you can type actual Python code in here um, but it's not very valuable in the sense that you're never going to be able to write like large or complex programs in fact you're hardly ever going to use this thing I never use it most of your code is going to be written in a actual text editor that we're going to see here in just a moment but if I were to say print hello world and this is going to be our first Python execution. So print, and then inside these uh, parentheses, you have these double quotes. And all it does is it actually executes right then and there. So you actually created a Python program by simply saying print hello world. And you could see the output got created. Now, one of the things I want to show you, because code is not anything special. It's just a, a, a like Python itself is just a language that was made up from another programming language called the C programming language. But Python was built on top of C. And they created all these keywords in Python that say, hey, if you type this keyword, it means do this and do that. So we know that programs all boil down to ones and zeros. But the good news is, is that as a programmer, as a Python programmer, or any other language for that matter for most of the major languages, you're not going to be writing ones and zeros. You're not even going to be writing machine code. You don't even have to write compilers. Python has all that stuff for you. So you just have to write code in a Python specific way and it will work. Now here's an example of one thing I want to show you. All your Windows software has a notepad file. And the notepad file allows you to just write any sort of file that you want. So I could write that same code and say print hello world. And that was the exact same code that we put in the console. But what the difference would be in order to actually execute this with your Python interpreter so that Python can say, hey, print, oh, that means something. And it would then, you know, print this to the screen. You would want to go ahead and save the file as, and we'll just put this on our C drive. I'll put it in my projects directory. And I'm just going to say test. And what you want to do is actually, instead of, it wants, Windows wants to save it as a text document, but you're going to do the drop down and say all files. That way you can give this a file extension, and that's just the last few characters so like a text file is .txt uh, and a jpeg is a .jpg yeah so there's all these different file types and python has its own file type and it's called it ends with a py short for python and a lot of people will call it like test.py or .py or whatever but you hear that's why you hear the word pi all the time but anyway if maybe you never heard it at all in your life i don't know but you're going to use that as your file extension so test.py we're going to save it it looks like I already have a test.py. That's weird. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and open up the command prompt to that directory. So I put it in my C projects directory, and then it's uh, down here at the bottom, I think. Yeah, test.py. So if I were to say test.py, what happens? Nothing happens because Windows didn't know how to execute it. So it actually pulled up all this stuff and says, hey, we think you want to use Python. Don't worry about any of that stuff. What you're going to want to do, if you wanted to run that test file as a Python program, you would just simply say Python first and then the name of the file. And now obviously you have to make sure you're in the directory where the file is currently located. Otherwise, Python's not going to know where test.py is. 
But since I'm saying python run test.py and I'm in the right directory, it's going to be able to run that. And there it is. So Python is a dynamically interpreted language. So a long story short, it's simple as hell to write Python code. The way we just showed you how to do it, you didn't even need anything besides installing Python and a text editor and you wrote code and actually executed it. This, this code could do a lot more than what we've seen. Um, it could write web pages, it could scrape the web, it could hack stuff, it could build video games, it could do whatever you want it to do. Um, but the way that I just showed you how to do it here isn't feasible. What we need is a text editor. We need something in order to be able to write our code in. And the best tool for the job that I think right now, and it's completely free, is Visual Studio Code. This is actually created by Microsoft, and it's, a, it's really a fantastic project. Um, so it just came out recently, but it allows you, you can see it has Python in here, but it allows us to have much better coloring and formatting for our Python program. So when we're writing our code, it's much more readable. Another great thing is that we can actually put little breakpoints inside here, which is what this little red dot is. And that breakpoint will allow the program, when we say Python run this, this script, it'll stop right in the middle there. And you can inspect your little names and stuff and see what's going on as the program is running and tell it, okay, execute the next statement, execute the next statement. And you can just step through your code file line by line, which is a, a very, very important feature. So what you want to do is make sure you install this. So you're going to download for Windows and install it. Once it's installed, in my case, I already have it installed. I'm going to go ahead and run it. All right, so now it's actually opening up a project that I have from earlier. So I'm actually going to create a new project for our tutorial, and we're going to call this Python for Beginners. So I'm going to select that as my folder, and you're going to see in uh, Visual Studio Code there's not a whole lot going on here but that's because our directory has no files in it but we're going to add files now one of the things um, you may see is this extensions and this is actually something that i need you to do you're going to click on this extensions button and you want to actually search for python see i already have it installed and you can see uh, there's multiple versions installed but you want to make sure you pick the don j main version so you can see uh, there's actually an update to this i need to go ahead and update but yours is going to say install. Make sure you install the right one. Don't install all this other crap down here. Make sure it's Don and JMain. And it should be at the time of this video 3.2.1 version. Um, so once you update an extension uh, or install a new extension, you're probably going to have to restart Visual Studio Code. And you can see that it actually says, um, looks like it's going to update probably more than one pro uh, sorry project. But we're going to restart this, uh, this, this program. Another thing, too, is if you ever get involved in like uh, GitHub and stuff like that, then this is also, it makes it very seamless in order to have a project within GitHub. All right, so that went ahead and it installed and it restarts. It should open back up in the folder that you were opening uh, last, and it looks like that did work. And let's go ahead and create our, our, our first Python program in an actual text editor. So I'm going to click on this little uh, new file icon. I can make this bigger, actually. So this new file icon, I'll click on that. Let me close that. All right, now we just need to name our file. So we'll say first file.py. OK, and now we say print hello world. All right, so now we need to actually say we want to debug this, but how do we do it? We go to this little debugger, little bug icon. We're going to click on that, and we're going to click on play. And since there's nothing uh, by default, wait, this is the first time, you should see this Python option. So you want to click Python. And this is actually going to create something for you, and they call it the uh, like project JSON or launch JSON file. Don't mess with it. Just go ahead and close that out, but you do need that in your directory. So if I go over to the directory icon, you're going to see that the VS Code adds some stuff in here, like that launch JSON file. JSON is a JavaScript format. 
um, for basically transporting data. So you don't have to worry about any of that. But Visual Studio Code needs it in order for your, your editor to work. So let's go back over to the debugger thingy. And now that we have Python selected and it created the VS code for us and stuff, we should be able to click play and actually execute this code. And you're going to see it, it actually pops up these little icons. And these icons allow you to um, you know, step through your entire line, uh, line by line. So if I said play, you can see here's the console. It actually displays right out to the bottom there. Now say if I had uh, multiple statements, I can say, um, just real quick, we're not going to look at variables or anything, but I'm going to create something called a variable. This is a variable. We're going to look in, uh, into this stuff in more in different videos, but I just want to show you an example where I can say, you know, instead of print hello world, we're going to print the value of this variable, which is this is a variable. Uh, but I want to put a little breakpoint here. So if I ho hover to the left of the number and I click, I can place this breakpoint. And now if I click play, I want to show you the beauty of the, the editor because this is going to actually help you learn how to program and stuff like that. So here it, it hits this first line. I can tell it to actually go, um, I can step over that line, go to the next line. And on the left hand side you can see it shows the variables in this panel and you can bring some of this stuff down. But you can see X is uh, giving you, it gives you the value there. But say you had like 500 variables, you would be able to see all those variables in here. And you would be able to see line by line how those variables are changing. You could even add a watch, like if you didn't want to look through a list of a bunch of different variables, you could say, you know what, just add this to watch. So that way I can see X changing. Another thing too is I can hover over the actual X and, and you can see the value of it. Now obviously this isn't that helpful because you're like, well clearly I see that X is assigned there, but uh, stuff gets changed all the time in your, in your program and things could be changing your variables all over the place. It could be in other files, it could be you know some sort of network error, you never know. But as you're stepping through the program, to be able to see in real time, okay, that's the value of this, you know, this value uh, x is very, very helpful because things do change. Um, because like I said, say here's print x, and let's just say I said, you know what, now x equals this uh, sucks, somebody changed my value. All right, so now x is that, and I can see, okay, print x, and we'll, we'll do that. Instead of uh, the breakpoint here, we're going to put the breakpoint down here. And then I'll click play. And now um, it's going to stop at the first line again. We'll continue to go line by line. But you can see if I hover over X, it says X is still this is a variable. And you can see that this got printed. This is a variable. But then this is where X gets changed. So say um, I'll step over that. And now pretend I, I'm, I haven't even gotten to this point yet. But I can hover over X. And I can say, oh, wait, that's not this is a variable and you can see the watch also you know lets you know that things have changed as well so one of the the key features as you start getting into very very complex code where you start having thousands of lines all over the place you absolutely need a uh, debugger and a text editor and the best thing about visual studio code is it's absolutely free a lot of people will tell you to use pycharm a lot of the tutorials that you're going to find on other websites uh, and other tutorial youtube tutorials that aren't as good as mine um, they're going to have you do all kinds of other stuff but I think this is a fresh new look at, at Python um, so I'm excited to build this series uh, let me know what you guys think and uh, let me know if you have any problems feel free to leave a description make sure you subscribe to the channel and I appreciate you guys watching have a good night we'll get into more Python in the next video bye